everyone, it's Katie from Paradise Falls Family. In this video, we'll be starting out our new vlog series covering our Mediterranean cruise aboard the Royal Caribbean Oasis of the Seas in May 2024. This was our first time sailing with Royal Caribbean and the kids in particular really wanted to try out one of their ships. So we picked a cruise sailing out of Barcelona, stopping at Mallorca, Pisa, Rome and Naples. In this series we'll be talking through this trip and focusing on the ship itself in this video. In the rest of the series we'll talk through the ports, excursions and what we got up to. As I said this was our first time sailing with Royal Caribbean having previously sailed with Disney and Norwegian Cruise Line. We gave the kids a choice of a resort holiday or a cruise and they picked this based on all of the amazing activities that they have on board and I have to say we weren't disappointed. We had an amazing time, it was so much fun and it actually worked out around the same or perhaps even a bit cheaper than a typical resort holiday in Europe so it's a great option for a fun family holiday in the sun. We selected the cheapest possible inside cabin to keep costs down. We do like a balcony if the price is right but it was a bit much on this occasion and we ended up paying £2,600 for the cruise which of course includes all of your food as well so it felt like a real bargain. Our flights from Manchester to Barcelona were unfortunately a lot higher than the usual cost and it cost us just over £2,000. I think this was because there were some events going on in the city at the same time. But added to the cost of the cruise, this was still less than a week in a resort. In addition to this, we budgeted a few hundred pounds for a night in a cheap hotel in Barcelona, tips for the cruise, which I'll talk about later, and a little bit of spending money. We did add on some excursions in a few ports, but these are purely optional, and I'll talk about those later in the series. So going back to the start of our trip, we flew out to Barcelona with Ryanair on the Saturday morning, landing at El Prat Airport. There are a few different airports in the Barcelona area, some are quite a way away, so make sure you know which one you're flying to. The flight and journey through the airport was a breeze, and it's just about a 20 minute taxi journey into the city of Barcelona itself. We spent a night in Barcelona, again I'll talk about it in next week's vlog, before we boarded the ship on Sunday at around midday. So now in the rest of this video I'll talk you through the ship, give a bit of an overview, what we got up to, with loads of tips along the way. First up, boarding. This was without a doubt the slickest boarding process we've ever experienced. This is our sixth cruise overall, our first with Royal Caribbean and it was so so quick. We got a taxi from our hotel in the city over to the cruise terminal which was only around 20 euros. The taxi dropped us right outside of the terminal. We checked in on the Royal Caribbean app weeks before and selected a boarding time of midday. We like to get to the ship early to get settled and to make the most of our time. We pulled up just before midday and there were plenty of porters outside to take our luggage straight away. We'd printed the luggage tags before we left and had attached these already so it was so easy just to hand them over. They were only taking suitcases, no soft bags or hand luggage which was a little frustrating as we hadn't realised and we were then left with four big rucksacks for the next few hours but it really wasn't the end of the world. We then joined a short queue to get into the terminal which only took about two minutes to check passports, pass through security and show our passes to board the ship. There were a few gift shops in the terminal but as it was already midday we were able to just walk straight onto the ship with no wait whatsoever. Walking aboard you enter on deck 5 which is probably the main hub of the ship. There are staff waiting to greet you, provide life jacket guidance and check that we'd watch the safety videos and that completed the mandatory safety muster drill so it was all incredibly easy and then we were free to head off and enjoy the ship. Whenever we board a cruise ship, we always tend to head straight to the buffet to get some food before it gets too busy, so off we went to Windjammers for lunch and then spent the rest of the day exploring the ship, getting settled in our room and just generally having a brilliant time. The week was set out with a stop in Mallorca on the first day, then a day at sea before stops in ports close to Pisa, Rome, Naples and then a final day at sea before disembarking. 
Greg and I have been to Mallorca a few times already, so for this one we gave the kids the option of getting off the ship or staying on board, and they decided to stay on the ship. So we ended up with three days on board and three days ashore, which was perfect in the end and gave us time to really enjoy everything on this wonderful ship. It wasn't until we got up to the top decks that we really appreciated the size of this ship. It's absolutely massive. From the outside you can see the length and height but the width is really impressive and it appeared about twice as wide as ships we've been on previously. The Oasis of the Seas is one of six Oasis class ships which is some of the biggest cruise ships in the world. With Royal Caribbean recently releasing Icon of the Seas as well, it means you can now get some really good deals like we did on what are some of the best ships in the world. So after some time exploring, our room was ready by around 2pm with our luggage waiting outside. This was really slick, really quick and convenient. Our room was on deck 3, right at the bottom towards the back of the ship, room 8 to 8. It was near the main dining room but set back enough and away from the lifts that we never had any noise or disturbance. As I said our room was an inside room with a double bed and a sofa bed. It was an okay size and had a decent little bathroom with a standalone shower. I'd say the room was a little old and actually smelt a little bit like it needed airing out. Some of the drawers were a bit rickety, nothing major but perhaps not quite as polished as we were hoping for. Then again, we did pick the cheapest possible room, so this is something to keep in mind when selecting your cabin. It did the job for the week though, but we had hoped for a bit more, so if you can afford a little bit more, then go for it. The other point to note is that when the sofa bed was made up, there was actually very little floor space, meaning getting around the room was quite tricky, something to keep in mind. Our room attendant was lovely and cleaned the room each morning and then prepared the beds each evening. The service wasn't quite up to the Disney standards we've enjoyed in the past, for example only a few towel animals during the week and sometimes the bin wasn't emptied. Little bits like that but he was so friendly and worked so hard to make it an enjoyable and comfortable stay. We were towards the back of the ship near one set of lifts. There are 12 lifts to each bank, with a bank at the front and one at the back, so despite the ship being so big, you never really had to wait very long for a lift, and getting about the ship was really easy. We're already at the bottom of the ship with our stateroom, so let's start our tour of the ship here and work upwards. On deck 3, other than the dining room, there's also the conference centre at the front of the ship. Then on deck 4 is where the fun really starts. At the back you've got the second floor of the main dining room, the casino in the middle, art gallery, studio B and ice rink, some restaurants and lounges, and finally the Royal Theatre at the very front of the ship. A big point to note here is that the casino permits smoking, meaning a good portion of this deck and surrounding areas smell of smoke and to get from one end of the ship to the other you have to pass through the casino, which if you're not a smoker and have young kids isn't very pleasant, so try and use floors 3 or 5 where you can to get around. With the theatre and Studio B here though, there's a good chance you'll spend a good amount of time on deck 4. This is where a lot of the entertainment is, as well as the meeting point for a lot of the onshore excursions. I'll talk through the excursions in more detail in the next few vlogs, but if you've pre-booked excursions with Royal Caribbean, your tickets will be waiting for you in your room when you arrive. These show meeting points and times, which for us was either in the theatre or Studio B on Deck 4. The theatre is spread over Decks 4 and 5 and is a lovely space where some of the main evening entertainment is often held, as well as some daytime events too. For our cruise there was the One Sky Show, the Broadway production of Cats and I believe some other shows with magicians and comedians, but those aren't really our thing so we didn't pay much attention to these. We did try the One Sky Show though, it was reasonably entertaining, decent quality but a little bit random. It might be worth trying if you're on board for a week, but it's by no means a must do. Then we also tried Cats. 
I'm a big fan of musicals and have never seen Cats before, so this was a must do for me. I have to say though, this one was not for us. We were all a little bit bemused. It's no reflection on the performers who were absolutely excellent. The singing and dancing was superb. It's just the story really wasn't for us. With the shows, you pre-book your reservation online beforehand using the app and the availability was fine. They do open up the theatre seats to anyone with 10 minutes to show time as well and we found, with the exception of the Aquashow Theatre, that there were still loads of seats available even if you hadn't managed to get an advance reservation. Studio B is a multi-purpose venue. For some of the week it's the Laser Tag Arena. An inflatable arena is constructed and you can book a slot to have a go if you want. It's called Clash for the Crystal City in the app. You're split into two teams to battle it out in line with their storyline, something about fighting yetis on a distant planet. The story doesn't really matter, you're basically just running or strictly speaking to the rules and walking around shooting each other, as per any other laser tag arena, and it was loads of fun. We all thought this was brilliant for a free included activity. The only downside was that it was fairly short, maybe about 20 minutes once you've taken out the pre and post game time and you can only book one slot per cruise. You can show up and cross your fingers there are some spaces left if you want another go but it's not guaranteed. This was a common policy for all activities, understandably with so many guests and you can only book each activity once per cruise. So make sure you don't waste a booking as you won't be able to rebook. The rest of the week, Studio B is converted into the ice rink. There are loads of free skating sessions, each lasting around 45 minutes with about 20 minutes of actual skating time. Skates and helmets are provided and slots are bookable on the app. It's fun for a quick skate, so worth doing given it's included. It does get a little chilly, as you might expect, so make sure to run back to grab a jumper from the room beforehand. Participants do need socks and full length trousers and there are also age restrictions so make sure to check this out as well. Separate to this there is also an ice show that's performed multiple times over the week. This is really impressive, it's themed around Hans Christian Andersen and his fairy tales so it's probably aimed at younger families. Again it's worth checking out as it's just so unusual to see an ice show on a cruise ship. Moving up a deck to deck 5, this is the main hub of the ship and where you'll spend a good chunk of your time. Around the outside there's a running track if this is your thing. The third floor of the dining room at the back and then the second floor of the spa and the theatre at the front. In between on midship is the Royal Promenade which has most of the shops on board as well as bars, lounges, some restaurants and guest services. In terms of shops, there's a Royal Caribbean store for all of your souvenirs and then several other jewellery, clothing and cosmetic stores. Make sure to check out Regalia, the jewellery store as they give away free little charm bracelets at least once a day. These are called Royal Ropes and these giveaways are scheduled in the app. There were maybe 10 or so giveaways throughout the cruise and you can collect the whole set if you really want. The kids loved this and we built up quite a collection over the cruise. The idea is to get people into the shop but they were happily giving away the bracelets to dozens and dozens of people so don't be afraid to go along if this is something you fancy even if you don't plan on buying anything. There are a few dining options on the promenade, Cafe Promenade, Starbucks and Sorrento's as well as several bars including the Globe and Atlas pub and the Rising Tide bar which slowly moves up and down between decks 5 and 8. Because of this there's sometimes a wait or a small queue so we never actually got on this but it looks like a really fun novelty bar. Then there's the Bionic bar which is the robot bar. You program in what drink you want on the iPad, pay your tab and then the robot goes to work making your drink. Again, it's a really fun novelty that's worth trying at least once on your cruise. Spotlight Karaoke is another venue worth mentioning. As well as karaoke, it's a multi-purpose venue, often hosting trivia games and things like that. 
We went along to the Disney trivia and it was crammed full. We ended up sitting on the floor. So make sure to go early as it is quite small and does fill up fast. The Taylor Swift trivia was moved to the music hall as it was so popular, which felt a little bit more sensible as there was a lot more room in here. In the evening, the Royal Promenade really comes alive with live music and entertainment. On the first night there was a midnight balloon drop which was loads of fun and the kids loved so make sure not to miss that. Then there's a pirate parade a couple of times during the cruise and different theme nights and things like that so keep an eye out on the app for what's going on here. Moving up to deck 6 you've got the upper level of the promenade with a few more bars and stations for shore excursions, photos and booking your next cruise. At the front of the ship is the fitness centre, whereas at the back is the boardwalk, another area where you'll probably spend a fair amount of time. This is open air going all the way up to the top of the ship. It's themed like a seaside boardwalk with more shops including a brilliant but pricey sweet shop Sugar Beach, restaurants like Johnny Rockets, a hot dog stand and sports bar. There are also a few games and activities like a free carousel, foosball table, basketball games and pool tables in the sports bar. At the back of the ship is the landing for the ultimate abyss slide which starts on deck 16 and spirals down to here. This is a must do, it's not nearly as scary as it looks and it's so much fun, we did it loads of times. The only downside is you have to jump back in the lift to get back to the top. Make sure to check the opening hours on the app as they sometimes open it at night for an added level of fun. Back on deck 6 you have the shuffleboard court right at the back overlooking the ocean, one of our family traditions on a cruise now, and then the steps up to the rock climbing walls. Again another free activity that's a must do. You get a short time on the wall to keep the queue moving but you don't need to pre-book and you can come back as many times as you want. It's exhilarating climbing up overlooking the beautiful ocean. Again you need shorts and socks and there are age restrictions so check the app beforehand. The last thing to mention on deck 6 is the Aqua Theatre. This is the last venue for the evening entertainment showing the Aqua 80 show four times during our cruise. The theatre includes a pool with an adjustable floor and multiple diving boards. The show is made up of dancing, high wire acts, high dives, synchronised swimming and loads of incredible stunts all set to a high energy 80s soundtrack. Going in we had no expectations but all agreed without a doubt this was the best show we'd ever seen anywhere. It was absolutely brilliant and blew us all away. We've never seen anything like it and in fact we've looked at rebooking another cruise solely off the back of this show. We had so much fun and the kids insisted on sitting in the front row splash zone so they got absolutely soaked and had the best time. They provide towels on all of the seats at the front so this was definitely a sign of how wet you get in those first few rows. Again you can only book once per cruise. You can queue to try and get a last minute seat but these were really long queues here with the show being so popular so make sure you get your reservation in for this one. Moving up the ship, deck 7 is just staterooms but deck 8 has a few bits of interest all around Central Park. This is a beautiful, peaceful, open air oasis right in the middle of the ship. It feels surreal walking through a quiet park in the middle of the ocean and it's a great addition to the ship, although we didn't actually spend a lot of time here in the end. There are a couple of restaurants, shops and bars here too, as well as the music hall I mentioned earlier. This extends up to deck 10 and has a variety of events on here throughout the cruise. Decks 11 and 12 are predominantly state rooms other than the card rooms which are little games rooms and then deck 13 doesn't actually exist due to superstition. Deck 14 has a few more things of interest. Firstly there is the Royal Escape Room. This looked brilliant, another pre-bookable event but there were age restrictions on it so our kids at 10 and 8 were too young so we didn't get to try this one. Then there's the Adventure Ocean which is the kids club. 
This includes a little cinema that everyone can enjoy throughout the cruise. Then it has several other rooms where the staff put on activities and games to keep the kids entertained. The club has operating hours and different sessions that vary daily so you can't stay all day but it does cover a good chunk of the day. Our kids went in here a few times to give it a try and they did enjoy it and it did seem like really good quality care and entertainment. Our kids really loved getting involved in the organised games they were playing such as Gaga Ball. Deck 15 and 16 are where you'll find the top outdoor decks and this is another area that you'll spend a lot of time in. At the front of deck 15 is the solarium and the adult only areas. These have some great whirlpools with TVs but on the one occasion we tried this area it was incredibly busy and just not that enjoyable but maybe we were just a bit unlucky with our timing. In midship you've got three swimming pools, Splash Away Bay which is the kids area and the Perfect Storm water slides. There are three different slides here, all really fun for the whole family. Then you've got loads of whirlpools dotted around on this deck and deck 16 to warm up and relax in. With so many pools and slides as well as loads of lounges we never found it too crowded and always found somewhere to sit and swim easily. We also found the queues for the slides weren't too bad either. It was obviously quieter on shore days as you'd expect, so our best day here was the Mallorca day. Something to keep in mind if you don't fancy going ashore. Moving towards the back of the ship is the table tennis table and the arcade, two areas we spent a lot of time in. The arcade was fun but we did find some of the games weren't in great condition and our money was swallowed up a few times but it was still lots of fun nevertheless. Then there's Portside Barbecue, an extra charge barbecue restaurant, but there was free live music here most afternoons which was absolutely brilliant and on several occasions we got a drink and chilled here for a bit to enjoy the music. On the other side of the ship is El Loco Fresh, the Mexican cafe, which is complimentary and a great lunch option. In terms of entertainment here, you've got Oasis Dunes, the mini golf course. You can walk up and play whenever you want and it's a fun little course to enjoy. Then there's the zip line, which again we didn't try because of the weight limits that meant our kids were just too small to go on it. It did look fun, although pretty short, but you can't really argue given that it's free. On the other side of the ship is the sports court, just the one which meant it was always very busy mainly with people playing basketball. This did make it tricky for younger ones to play, but there were some organised events throughout the day for different age ranges which really helped. For example, kids football, or soccer for any Americans listening, was a hit with us and Finley enjoyed this several times during the cruise. Up on deck 16, above the sports court and mini golf are the Flow Rider wave machines. Once again, this is all complimentary. One is for boogie boarding on your tummy and the other is for full surfing. You can walk up and join the queue to have a go whenever you want within the opening hours and there's an instructor there to guide you on how to stay on the board. It's so much fun and not as hard as you might think, laying down at least. We never graduated onto standing but maybe that's one for next time. Between the two floor riders is the top of the ultimate abyss slide that I mentioned earlier, so this is where you start that. At the other end of the ship is the second level of the solarium, more lounges, whirlpools and the lime and coconut bar which is great for a cocktail. This is a great spot to grab a lounger, a drink and enjoy the views out to sea, absolutely brilliant. Then in midship is the Windjammer Marketplace, the main buffet, which I'll come on to in a moment. Above this point there are decks 17 and 18, which are just made up of suites and lounges, and it isn't somewhere you'll probably venture unless you're staying in one of these. So that should provide a really good overview of the ship. Now I'll just circle back to a few areas I mentioned earlier. The first of these is food. We found the Royal Caribbean dining system a little confusing when we were preparing for this trip, but in reality it's pretty simple. Basically, as with most cruisers, all food is included in your booking. 
Breakfast and lunch are served in various locations throughout the ship, with dinner predominantly served in the main dining room. On a Royal Caribbean cruise, you can either choose traditional dining, where you're assigned one of two dining times, or my time dining, where you can eat in the main dining room anytime during the dinner hours. We don't know too much about the latter system, although we have heard you can have a long wait for a seat in the dining room. We went for the traditional dining, selecting the earlier seating at 6pm, and you can pick this when you book your cruise. We always prefer to eat earlier with the kids as it just suits us better. When you board the ship, you're given your key cards and you use these to get in and out of your room to pay for things and as ID getting on and off the ship. They also show your table number for dinner. We were assigned the third floor dining room which was really handy given the location of our stateroom and we were able to walk straight in at 6pm. You keep your assigned waiters throughout the cruise which is really nice as you get to know them a little and the service was really personalised. Dinner includes three courses with a different menu each night. As with most cruises you can order as much as you want so if you want two of anything that's absolutely fine. The food is excellent and allergies are well taken care of, so we enjoyed eating here. I'd say the only downsides are that the kids menu only has four options and it doesn't change throughout the cruise, meaning it can get a little bit samey. However, kids can order off the main menu if they want, which is what ours tended to do. Also, having picked the early dining time, it meant it clashed with some of our shore days, particularly in Rome and Naples, where we only arrived back on the ship around 6pm and just weren't ready to sit and eat a nice meal. So keep this in mind when making dinner plans. There are also theme nights. So there was a formal night, dress to impress, Caribbean night, white night, as well as a few casual nights. To be honest, this isn't really our thing, we don't want to have to worry about what we're wearing or dressing up, so we purposefully skipped the main dining a few nights to avoid this. We did notice later on in the cruise though that not everybody stuck to the dress code, so it didn't seem a big deal if you didn't dress up as the theme dictated, but nevertheless we gave it a miss. Given this, we only ended up eating in the main dining room twice. Certainly not a reflection on the food or service, but just our preference. The rest of the nights we ate at the Windjammer Marketplace. The buffet just suited us and the kids a little bit better. It was more relaxed and really easy to rock up whenever we fancied, so just suited us better on this cruise. The buffet has an amazing selection of food, loads of different cuisines, excellent quality and the hygiene was really good with everyone having to wash their hands before entering the restaurant. There was loads of seating so we'd never had a problem there and it just worked really well for us. You can get breakfast, lunch and dinner here, meaning this is where we ate most of the time. There are a couple of other venues which are complimentary. You can eat breakfast or lunch in the main dining room, the Solarium Bistro, Park Cafe, Cafe Promenade, Sorrento's for pizza, Boardwalk Doghouse for hot dogs, El Loco Fresh and even room service, which we used for breakfast one morning and it was brilliant. We can also recommend El Loco Fresh as well. It's really handy for the pool deck and had some really good Mexican food. So as you can see, you've got loads of options, but if you did want to try something different, there are also lots of paid for additional restaurants as well. We didn't try any of these, we're not big foodies, so we didn't see the point in paying extra when everything we've already mentioned was all included in the price of the cruise. But we were really tempted by the portside barbecue and Izumi teppanyaki, which both looked really good. You can reserve tables at these in advance on the app, so make sure to plan ahead if this is something you want to do. In terms of drinks, only basic soft drinks are included in the price of the cruise. So water, lemonade and squash. These were readily available in windjammers and around the ship. Anything more than that comes at an additional cost. We did pre-order one soft drinks package so we could have the odd fizzy drink. This cost £70 for the week and meant we got a freestyle cup given to us on arrival. This meant we could use the freestyle machines in windjammers and around the ship. This was good, but meant we had to carry the cup around with us everywhere we went, which was a bit of a pain. 
We also ordered 12 big bottles of water for £22 and these were waiting in our room on arrival. These came in really handy for shore excursions and that sort of thing and 12 was more than enough for the four of us for the week. Alcoholic drinks are payable in addition. We're not big drinkers, just the odd cocktail so this was fine for us. There was loads of choice, each coming in at around $18. We could have added on the alcoholic drinks package as well, but this was quite expensive and would have added quite a lot of money on to the price of the cruise and we thought it would only really be worth it if you're planning on having quite a lot each day. Moving on now to evening entertainment. I've already touched on the main shows. There was always something going on each night with loads of other activities continuing well into the evening too, so you were spoilt for choice. The main shows were generally on at least twice during the week and included the One Sky Show, Cats, The Ice Show Frozen in Time and Aqua 80. There was also a magician one night and a comedian on on another, but this isn't really our thing. Then of course there was usually something going on at the Royal Promenade and it included a silent disco one night, or you can chill out in the pool or hot tubs. The slides generally closed around half past seven, earlier than we'd expected so that was a shame as we really love a night swim. One of the pools and some of the hot tubs though stayed open later so we did make use of these a few times while they were nice and quiet. As I've already mentioned a lot of the main activities and shows can be reserved using the Royal Caribbean app. The app is essential while you're on board and contains everything you need. We found it generally worked very well and had up-to-date information on all the latest activities. You can use the app on the ship even without the Wi-Fi package, so it's all free which is great. It's worth noting that activity times can change over the week though, so check back regularly as we found some events were moved or cancelled later in the week. The app also has information about ports and excursions and a summary of your onboard account. This was generally up to date and pretty useful to keep track. The one area it did fall down on was the tips. We'd read in advance that tips were $18 per person per day, regardless of the age of passenger. However, the account only added $18 per day in total, so we wondered if we'd got it wrong and it made it harder to budget. It wasn't until we'd got back from the cruise that we were charged for all of the tips for every person without receiving a bill breaking this down. So this could have been a bit more transparent but otherwise it worked really well. These tips are shared between all of your servers, room attendant and other people and you can flex these up and down if you want to at guest services I believe. I think the final area to touch on is debarkation. Again this was really slick. You can log your preferences throughout the week on the app and then the day before you depart you're messaged with your debarkation time and some luggage tags are left in your stateroom. We requested half past 8 to 9am and got given 10 past 8 so get your request in early if you want a specific time. We packed and left our luggage outside of our room with the tags by 10pm the night before. These are then taken off the ship for you and are waiting in the terminal when you walk off. You can go for breakfast in the dining room or wind jammers and then you're notified on the app when you can disembark. If you're in your room there's also a dedicated channel showing the boarding groups so it's very well organised and communicated. You leave on deck 5 and there was no queue so we were able to walk straight off and get our luggage. There were loads of taxis waiting at the terminal so we hopped in one of those and headed into Barcelona city centre for a few hours before our flight home. This was only around 20 euros, so really reasonable. In terms of luggage, we wanted somewhere to store this before our flight so we didn't have to have our suitcases with us in the city centre. We used a company called Bags and Go to store our luggage and transport it to the airport for us. This cost 12 euros per bag, but was worth it not to have to worry about our luggage all day. We pre-booked this online and they had a stand in the terminal. Everybody knew who they were here at the port and at the airport so they're a really reputable company and one that we'd really recommend. We just had to head over to Terminal 1 to pick up our luggage at the airport at the agreed time and then jump on the shuttle over to Terminal 2 which was where our flight departed from. 
So that brings us to the end of our cruise. We've tried to cover off all of the key things which may be useful for you on your cruise, but if there's anything at all you want to know, then please just message us in the comments below. Over the next few weeks, we'll be looking a bit more at our days ashore in Barcelona, Rome, Pisa and Naples. So make sure to subscribe to our channel to catch that and to help support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching.